Okay, hi everyone. So, um, just wanted to show you where I'm at with my programming. <laughs> I've managed to get a frame buffer and render buffer on the screen. So, that means that now I'll be able to just render in a different color. Uh, or I'll render the scene in different colors for each part that needs to be colored. And then use GL read pixels to check the pixels on there and I should be alright or good to go. As long as the colors are correct. So I'm just going to show you where I'm with how it works. So, um, so here we go. So I'm just going to minimize these. Actually, I'll keep this open because it does show information that you might be. I don't know why you would want to give a shit about it, but see if I just resize this, it's like normal. I click this, and I resize. See that? Yeah, it does kind of act weird, but there is a frame buffer there. See, see, there's two parts here, and then there's a separate bit here. Well, I don't know why it's. Oh, I know why it's done that because it's it's taken one portion of the frame buffer, and I guess that has this color there. I guess. So not, I'm not quite sure why that does that, but as you can see. The more I shrink it, the more you see the original image. But that's the frame buffer. Or oh, render buffer, sorry. Render buffer. No, frame buffer. With a render buffer in it. I don't know. It's something to do with render buffers and frame buffers. Either way, it's got the thing there. So now I've got to do is render this entire scene again into this. Then change the colors of whatever parts that I want. And then do read pixels wherever the mouse is. And there you go. Um, I just have to make sure that this shows up very quickly and then goes away very quickly or goes behind the, this thing here or something. I don't know how, I've, I guess I can do it behind the screen, behind here or something. I don't know how that works, but I'm going to figure it out. Um, but yeah, there you go. So I managed to actually pull it off, this part of it. This is the hardest bit um, for, for me. Um, this part. Um uh, Next hardest bit, well I don't think there's going to be that many hard bits after that. Font rendering maybe might be kind of difficult, but I don't see it being that much of a problem. I just love how that resizes so damn well. I am using GLM, I didn't use it before and it was resizing mostly like pretty decently, but um... It acts weird when I do that, but I think that's because, I don't know, there's some gap there or something, I don't know why it does that. <clears throat> Actually, let's see if we'll be able to find out for ourselves. Yeah, okay, what's happening is that there's actually, it's, it's gotten actually the area of the screen, because I think when you start this program, there is... Oh, there isn't any grey, but I think it does. Uh, sorry, this per pink colour, this foil, folly, folly colour actually, folly. It does take this folly colour into account when it's resizing. But if we were to go like this and then resize it, it's done it at a small size, which is kind of, and now it's done it at a bigger size. Now if I did it again, oh, oh interesting. Maybe it just acts weird there. Yeah. But that's a smaller size compared to that. Because obviously. Yeah, because it was that size when I clicked the render buffer. But it does it, it only does it that one time once you've clicked it. And it only takes on. 255 and 255 on the X and Y axis, uh, the pixels. So, this is fucking awesome. So, I finally have color picking for officially. This can work with 3D as well. So, And if I want to make it complex, I just render the texture that has all the color mesh or whatever it is. Um, 
or the texture over whatever however I'm going to put the colours. That's actually that might be the next problem. Is how do I put tech colours onto the onto the the colours onto the meshes that are drawn into the render buffer and frame buffer. I presume I use textures because it'll be easier. So yeah, you just put textures in there and you just specify different colours. So if you want um, th the top part of a box to be when clicked, we'll then move it in an X direction. Then you could do that and then you have blue colour on the left for the Y direction or something. You know, that sort of thing. That's how you'd make it more complex. So that's kind of awesome. I think this is the best method. These insane calculations of ray casting and all that shit. It's just stupid. It might be good for like bullet stuff, but other than that, you know, game, sh you know, game graph, uh, sorry, in game battles or, you know, stuff like that. It's all right. It's hard to talk because I'm so sick of talking. I hate talking. I don't know if anybody knows that, but I actually hate talking. So it's really hard for me to talk because I hate talking. So, anyways, there you go. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that.